When you go get ice cream, you order vanilla every time, right? No, not when there's salted caramel, butter pecan, and chocolate chunk. So why are you baking bread with only white flour? Hello lovely people, Nicole here. This video is part of a deep dive series I'm doing on sourdough. And I just wanna say thank you to all you guys for showing up in the comments on the last few videos. If you're just getting the memo and you're looking to up your baking game, then go watch those videos right after this one. There are links below. Today, we're exploring ancient wheat. We're going to discover what exactly we've been missing out on and why. This is a hands-on, side-by-side -side comparison of the four most readily available ancient wheats here in the US, spelt, einkorn, emmer, and kamut. Each of these has its own unique flavor, texture, and baking qualities. I'm going to put them head to head to see which one reigns supreme. Now, if you just want the instant gratification of knowing which one performs best, without an understanding into any of their mind-blowing benefits, then skip to here in the video. But first, let's just define what ancient wheat is. First off, wheat is ancient, period. We can trace the crop to the very birth of agriculture at least 7,000 years ago, but modern wheat is very different from what wheat used to be. The flour that you buy in the grocery store today comes from varieties that were bred for production qualities, like super high yields and high performance gluten. Notice that I didn't say flavor. These ancient varieties, on the other hand, have remained largely unchanged, at least for the last several hundred years. They fell out of favor because they weren't compatible with our modern industrial food system. For one thing, their gluten structure is much more delicate. You cannot use these wheats in big industrial mixers to pump out massive amounts of bread quickly. At the farm level, they're expensive to process because they all have tough hulls, an outer layer that's sort of like a corn husk. You need a special piece of equipment to remove the holes on these grains. Whereas the holes of modern wheat are barely there, you can easily remove them with a little jostling in the combine. So as farmers stopped growing these other kinds of wheat, we forgot that wheat wasn't supposed to taste like one bland, homogenous thing. Luckily though, there's been a revival in artisan bread baking, and there are farmers dedicating themselves to reviving these heritage wheats. And it turns out that these ancient wheats are really compatible with organic growing. They can outmuscle weeds. They can grow in poor soil without needing to be pumped up with fertilizers. They don't yield as much wheat pound for pound as modern wheat, but that's not what we're going for here. We're going for all the goodness these ancient wheats bring, amazing flavor and more nutrition. Ancient wheats have significantly higher protein than modern wheat, and they're rich sources of many vitamins and minerals our bodies need. They're also believed to be more digestible than modern wheat. I say believed because many of the studies that claim ancient grains are more digestible are, generally speaking, funded by whole grain advocates, while counter-research trying to debunk those claims is, again, generally speaking, funded by big wheat. Funny that. So let's take a closer look at them. Einkorn is thought to be the oldest of all ancient wheats. Einkorn means one kernel in German and refers to the single floret in a spikelet of einkorn grass. Modern wheat grows three to five kernels per spikelet. Einkorn is also the tiniest of the ancient wheats here and rich in carotenoids, which give the ground flour a vaguely golden tinge. Emmer kernels are slightly larger than einkorn, and they're known for their robust flavor. In ancient times, emmer rose to dominate einkorn because it was easier to grow. Emmer could better tolerate heat, and it was less likely to drop its seed before harvest. It yields a soft flower that has an almost reddish hue. Spelt is a big, plump wheat that joins soy and quinoa as a complete protein, meaning it has all nine essential amino acids our bodies need, a rare thing in the plant world. I find that generally, spelt flour behaves a lot like modern wheat when you're making bread, which makes sense since it's most closely related to common bread wheat than the rest of these ancient varieties. 
Kamut is the American commercial name for Khorasan wheat. Khorasan is a northeastern province of Iran, where this wheat is native. It's an ancestor of durum wheat, the leading wheat grown for pasta, which yields a golden flower. Kamut's thin, elegant kernels also yield a soft golden flower. So the advantage of having my Como countertop grain mill is that I can mill my grain minutes before making my bread. So there's zero loss of flavor, fragrance, or nutrition, all of which degrades over time as flour sits at room temperature. Full disclosure, I got my Como from Pleasant Hill Grain, who I'm partnering with on this sourdough video series. I'll put a link below so you can check this mill out yourself. Now for the side-by-side -side comparison of how each of these four ancient wheats performed in a sourdough loaf. I used the same base ingredients for each loaf, my sourdough starter, water, salt, and flour. Each loaf was made with 60% whole ancient grain and 40% organic white bread flour. In a 60-40 loaf, the flavor of the ancient grain comes through loud and clear, but the modern wheat helps strengthen the gluten structure so that we still end up with a nice buoyant crumb. And here are my key takeaways. First off, I learned that not all wheat should be milled the same way. I milled everything at the third from finest setting. The einkorn and kamut came out buttery soft. The emmer felt a little sandy, and there were pretty big pieces of bran left in the spelt. The einkorn and emmer were stickier doughs to work with, but at this hydration, around 77%, it wasn't that difficult to manage them. If you don't know what hydration is or how it can improve your bread, I'll drop a link at the end to a recent video where I break it all down. Now, the kamut was the thirstiest dough. I added an extra 50 grams of water, and in hindsight, I could have pushed it 50 more without the dough becoming too sloppy. It built up great strength. Overall, I'd say kamut was a dream to work with. The spelt dough was surprisingly sticky during the slap and fold and took longer than expected to come together. But the dough built up some good strength, as you can see, and it was easy to shape too. After cold proofing all the dough overnight in the fridge, I could see the emmer and einkorn doughs weren't as elastic. They had more slack due to their lower gluten. On the other hand, I began to worry that I had slightly underproofed the kamut and spelt. They were just a little less springy to the touch than I like. All four breads baked up rather beautifully. The einkorn rose surprisingly well even as it spread out, while the emmer showed the weakest gluten strength. But stay tuned, the crumb of both loaves was a very pleasant surprise. The kamut and spelt had the most vertical rise, as I'd anticipated from working with the doughs, and they formed beautiful, crisp ears. I should also mention that the golden color of the kamut bread is really beautiful. And the emmer, too, had a bit of the pretty reddish hue that you can see in its raw kernel. Now, when I opened the einkorn, I was really happy with how fluffy the crumb was. I expected a much denser crumb from a wheat with low gluten. The emmer was also a nice surprise. I was expecting the densest crumb here, but it too had some nice holes going on inside. The emmer may have lost the strength test here, but it won for strength of flavor and aroma. If you want a really robust taste and fragrance, then emmer is your grain. Now, the spelt came out a lot denser than I expected, but I suspect that was a proofing issue. Next time, I'll lengthen the proof at room temperature before refrigerating. The flavor and aroma of the spelt was the mildest of all four loaves. 
I may have also underproofed the Kamut. I think you can get a more open crumb with a longer proof time and more water. Yet even with its small holes, this was not a dense bread. The interior was light and tender. In terms of overall performance, the Kamut wins my Battle of the Ancient Grains for its gluten strength, for being easy to work with, for its beautiful golden crisp crust and really lovely flavor, which is maybe even a little sweeter than the rest. I also can't get over the color of this loaf. Does this even look like a 60% whole wheat loaf? I promise, after you experience loaves like these, baking with 100% store-bought white flour will just seem like going back to vanilla ice cream every time. Even when I'm making a white loaf, I still add at least 25% whole grain ancient wheat because the flavor and aroma just can't be beat. And once you dive into milling your own grain, you're going to feel like a painter mixing colors. Combining these ancient wheats creates even more amazing flavor combos. You will be baking in Technicolor.